news outlets are buzzing with the news that in a recent interview with Eugenio Scalfari, Pope Francis made a comment that he's looking into solutions to the issues of priestly celibacy. And some people have taken this to mean that he's going to allow priests to get married. And I've even seen news reports saying this is going to be inevitable, it's about time that church needs to change, and all this kind of stuff. So the question being laid out there is, is this going to happen? Well, the answer, of course, is going to be that nobody knows. Well, maybe the Pope knows, but the rest of us don't know. But what we can say is that it is something that certainly is a possibility. However, I would say that it's extremely unlikely. It's a possibility. I say that because the issue of priestly celibacy is one of discipline within the Catholic Church. Discipline and dogma are two different things. Dogma cannot be changed. Dogma is that which is revealed to us by God himself. So, for example, something like the divinity of Jesus Christ or the three persons of the Trinity would be things that are dogmatically defined, and the Pope has no authority to change what God himself has revealed. But when it comes to something like priestly celibacy, that's what we say is a discipline in the Catholic Church, something put in place for practical and theological reasons, but we recognize that they're man-made policies and they can, in fact, change. In fact, the Church does have married priests as it stands today. Even in the Roman Rite, we have married priests, albeit by grave exceptions, so it's not the ordinary way of things. Other people have said to me, they said, well, does this mean then that if the Pope does allow married priests that you'd be able to get married? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Or at least I would assume it does not mean that at all. And the reason for that is I made a promise of celibacy. And my promise of celibacy was made for the entirety of my life. Regardless of what rules may or may not change, that promise is something that I made before the bishop, before God, and before the entirety of the church. And it's something that would be, I would think, binding, regardless of whether or not the Pope changes whether or not people entering into priesthood would be required to make that same promise. So I'm not available. I'm content being a priest so uh, as a celibate, so um, it's not an issue for me or anything like that. Um, plus, anybody who'd want to be with me would be crazy to begin with. So, um, so we'll just end that right there. But another question that comes up is, would this then be the first step towards ordaining women? No, it would not be. And the issue at hand is that while the question of priestly celibacy is in fact a discipline within the Catholic Church, the question of who is admitted to holy orders is not a matter of discipline. It's something that's been upheld by the long-standing tradition with a capital T in the Catholic Church and is not something that can be changed. Pope St. John Paul II articulated this in a document that he wrote, and he said he went through and kind of gave the history of the question of who can be admitted to holy orders, and then he definitively stated with his authority as the Pope from the chair of St. Peter that we are to hold that the Church has no authority whatsoever to ordain women. Now, in saying this, the Church is not trying to be chauvinistic. We're not saying that men are better than women or anything like that that often gets projected onto this. Rather, what we're saying is that men and women are, in fact, different. And we get this straight from Scripture. When God created us, he created us male and female. So there's something about our gender that goes to our ontology, our, our, our level of being. And it's different from something like our race or something like that. Scripture doesn't say, you know, he created them black and white or something like that. But it does say male and female. And that means that there's an important distinction between male and female, and they are to complement one another. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that men and women can do exactly the same functions, that they serve the exact same purpose. See, unlike our society, which so often wants to blend the genders and say that there really is no essential difference between male and female, the church takes our gender very seriously. And so it says that this is something that was given to us by God. And God, in giving us our gender, has given us certain vocational callings or at least opportunities for, for vocations. I myself will never be a mother. <laughs> um, even if I weren't a priest, I would never be a mother, um, in the same way that a female will never be a father. And the church also says that in the same regard that men 
are the only people who can be admitted to the sacrament of, of holy orders. Um, again, don't take this to mean that men are somehow better. The church doesn't say that this makes men holier, or even that priests, by definition, are holier than the laity. In fact, we can point to, I think everybody can point to, with the priest abuse scandal, many priests who are not holy. And we can also point to many lay people who are probably a lot holier than many priests. Um, so it's not an issue of holiness. It's not even an issue of saintliness. It's an issue of tradition in the Catholic Church and what was ordained by Jesus Christ himself. Now, some people, of course, will object and say, well, Jesus didn't have the option of choosing women to be priests because nobody would have accepted a church that had female priests back in his day. That argument doesn't hold a lot of water. Reason being that Christ was no mere man. He was God incarnate. And so he would have seen all the implications of his actions. And not only that, if he wanted a female priesthood to work, even in that culture that he was living in, as God, he could have found the way that would have made it happen. But he chose not to do that. Now again, some people will say, well, the church is being chauvinistic. Again, I'd encourage you not to look at it this way, because I'd say this isn't a matter of, of holiness or saintliness or who has the best in with God, so to speak. In fact, the church says who has the best in with God would be his mother, Mary, uh, who happens to be a female, <laughs> for people who haven't taken notice of that. The church has a strong devotion to Mary, and we say that if anybody has an in with God, it's Mary, his mother. It's not the Pope. So certainly we wouldn't say that this is an issue of the church trying to be chauvinistic or anything like that. It's a matter of the difference between discipline and what has been divinely inspired and given to us and dogmatically and definitively defined by the Catholic Church.